I think we can all agree that typically, bad pitchers will lose more games than they win. As of July 28th, the league leader in losses this season is Dakota Hudson of the Colorado Rockies, who has 12 losses with a 5.84 ERA. Despite that, Hudson still has two victories. As of that date, there are 9 pitchers in Major League Baseball with an ERA over 6 with at least 10 games started. In spite of terrible stats, all 9 have at least 2 wins. What exactly is the point of this? The point is, is that no matter how bad a pitcher is, he's bound to win games. It is highly improbable a pitcher will continuously take a loss after loss after loss. With all that being said, there was one pitcher that ignored all logic to go on the unluckiest streak anyone has ever seen and broke a major league record in the process. Who is the pitcher in question? That would be former big leaguer Anthony Young. Anthony Young pitched in Major League Baseball for six seasons from 1991 to 1996. He played for the New York Mets, Chicago Cubs, and Houston Astros. In his career, Young appeared in over 180 games and threw exactly 460 innings. He went 15-48 and with a 3.89 ERA, 100 adjusted ERA, a 1.837 whip, struck out 4.8 batters per 9 innings, and earned 1.3 war. Nothing about his stats seem out of the ordinary, except his win-loss record. It's not often you see a pitcher with that many decisions have more than three times as many losses than wins. Among all pitchers in the history of Major League Baseball with at least 63 career decisions, Anthony Young's 238 win-loss percentage is the third lowest ever, and the lowest since World War II. How exactly did he wind up with such a terrible win-loss percentage? Well, it doesn't help that not only did he pitch on losing teams throughout his career, he pitched on a really, really bad Mets team in 1993. The Mets 59-103 record that year, the worst in all of Major League Baseball, doesn't accurately represent just how dysfunctional the club was. The 93 team honestly deserves their own main documentary, but that's a topic for another time. I mentioned that Mets team because it was during that season where Anthony Young broke a Major League record. Perhaps the one record that no baseball pitcher ever wants. What was the record? First, we need to go back to the previous season in 1992. On April 19th, Young picked up his second victory of the year, throwing three and a third innings out of relief. That win would be the last one he would earn in 465 days. Following that victory, Young appeared in 79 games, 19 starts, and 60 out of relief. During that span, he broke the Major League record for most consecutive losses without a win, where he lost 27 straight decisions. He had a record of 2-14 in 1992 and won 16 in 1993 for a combined 3-30 and record. It also wasn't as if 27 straight losses didn't barely beat the all-time record, it blew past it. Prior to Young's feat, the record for longest losing streak was 23 games by Cliff Curtis of the 1910 and 1911 Boston Doves, now called Atlanta Braves. Young and Curtis are the only such players in baseball history with a losing streak as long as 20 games, and since Young broke the record 31 years ago, the longest streak has been 16 losses in a row. It seems impossible that this could happen. Even downright terrible pitchers will win at least a few games over a span that long. How does this happen though? How does a pitcher lose 27 straight games without winning one? The first thought may be that Young was probably historically awful during that stretch, but the truth is, he was actually kind of decent. In the 79 games Young went between victories, he threw 183 in the third innings and allowed 89 earned runs for an ERA of 4.37. For context, the league-wide average ERA in the National League in 1992 was 3.50 and 4.04 in 1993. So yes, he was a below-average pitcher, but not by much. It's not as if he had an ERA of 11 or something outrageous. There are two main reasons why Young lost 27 straight decisions. When he started games, the Mets were just that incompetent, and when he came out of the bullpen, he was just that bad in high leverage situations. To break this down, Young took 14 losses as a starting pitcher and 13 as a reliever. In 7 of those 14 losses, Young threw a quality start but took the loss each time because the Mets gave him almost zero run support, 
scoring a total of 10 runs in those 7 games. What about his 13 losses out of relief? Young was converted into the closer halfway through 1992, where he did turn in 15 saves, but had a terrible finish to the season. In 11 games in September 1992, Young allowed 11 runs in 9 innings and blew 5 games, taking the loss all 5 times. I wasn't able to find out if that was the record for most blown saves in a month, but what I did find is that it was just one of 37 occurrences of a relief pitcher losing at least 5 games in a calendar month. If you think that's bad, Young found more ways to lose the following season. In 6 of his losses out of the bullpen in 1993, all occurred in the exact same way. He would get called in to pitch very late in the game with a score tied, then proceed to allow the opposing team to score the go-ahead run, thereby giving him the loss. I noticed how in 1993, Young made a lot of scoreless appearances where the Mets were already losing, so while his ERA wasn't terrible, he more or less pitched badly under high leverage situations. Imagine a pitcher who was flawless in games where his team was winning or losing by a lot of runs, but in tied games, he was terrible. That was essentially Anthony Young. I wanted to look at the specifics and found that in 1993, opposing hitters were hitting an OPS at 655 in low and medium leverage situations against Young. In high leverage situations, 813. When there were two outs and runners in scoring position, opposing batters hit an OPS of 839 against them. In late and close games, in 882 OPS. In layman's terms, he was terrific at the bullpen when the game was quote-unquote out of reach, but when the game was on the line, Young was downright terrible. He started the first two months of 1993 in the bullpen, where he was 0-5 through May, extending his losing streak to 19. However, starting in June, the Mets moved him back to the rotation, where Young had one of the most infamous 8-game spans any starting pitcher has ever had. Facing the Chicago Cubs on June 1st, Young pitched the gem, throwing 6 innings of scoreless baseball. New York had a 1-0 lead once he departed, and then the bullpen allowed 8 runs, giving Young a no decision. Over his next 4 games, Young threw 3 quality starts, but took the loss all 4 times, mostly thanks to a lack of run support. That 4th loss in particular had Young tie the Major League record at 23 straight losses. Hoping to avoid setting the all-time record, Young was quoted saying how he dressed his locker in the clubhouse with various good luck charms such as four-leaf clovers, coins, and rabbit's feet. He said those were things fans sent him, so at least he had a good spirit about the whole thing. On June 27th against the St. Louis Cardinals, Young was given an early 2-0 lead, but proceeded to allow 5 runs across 7 innings. With 2 outs in the ninth. Pinch hitter Jeff McKnight hit the ball as far as he could, but it was caught right in front of the wall for the final out, giving Anthony Young his 24th loss, setting the all-time record. He made two more starts following this, losing both times, extending the record to 26. Over this 8-game span from June to early July, Young threw 51 innings and had a respectable 4.24 ERA. Six of those 8 games saw him allow no more than 3 runs, and yet, he went 0-7. New York scored a total of 16 runs over those 8 games. He was moved back to the bullpen that month, where he suffered another loss, bringing his season record to 0-13 and the record climbing to 27 in a row. Amid all the losing, it was reported that Young would still crack jokes with reporters, handled the media well, and drew respect and admiration from those on the team and fans alike. To be fair, what else can you do with the most miserable record in baseball history? All streaks must come to an end though, and how Young's ended came in an unconventional manner to say the least. It was 31 years and 5 days ago on July 28th that the Florida Marlins were in New York to face the Mets. The game itself was ordinary for the most part, and New York was leading 3-2 in the top of the 8th. With Brett Saberhagen on the mound, the Marlins rallied, putting runners on the corners with 2 outs. First baseman Arrestes the start day, lined the ball into the right field corner to drive home Jeff Conai to tie the game. Newly acquired third baseman Gary Sheffield tried to come in to score, but the Mets relayed to throw him out to end the inning and keep the game tied. New York failed to score in the bottom half, and Anthony Young came in to pitch in the top of the ninth with the game tied at 3. Remember earlier when I said Young struggled in tied games? 
Yeah, it didn't take Florida long to tee off him. After a leadoff single, Daryl Whitemore attempted a sacrifice where catcher Todd Hundley bobbled the ball and everybody was safe on the error. In the next at bat, Walt Weiss attempted a sacrifice of his own and when Young fielded the ball, he wanted to get the lead runner at third but the third baseman was not covering the bag and everybody was safe again. Luckily, the third baseman Bobby Bonilla, maybe you've heard of him, made up for the gaff. With the bases loaded and nobody out, Rick Renteria hit a ground ball to Bonilla who threw a home plate to get the force and Hunley fired the ball to first to complete the double play. However again, on the very next pitch following the double play, Chuck Carr lays down a bunt and beats the throw from Eddie Murray to Young covering the bag and a run comes in to score. Just when you thought the Mets got out of it, think again. Young got the next batter to strike out and as the game heads to the bottom of the ninth, the Mets are three outs away from handing Young his 28th consecutive loss. On the mound for Florida in the ninth was closing pitcher Brian Harvey. Harvey was in the midst of one of the most incredible seasons any pitcher has ever had. Entering this game, he had 29 saves and an outstanding 1.66 ERA in 43 and a third innings. He finished the season with 69 innings pitched and a 1.70 ERA, which equated to a 252 adjusted ERA. For some context, Harvey's season was just one of 25 ever where a pitcher recorded a 252 or greater adjusted ERA in that many innings. All New York had to do was score off a pitcher having one of the most dominating seasons of all time to avoid giving Young the loss yet again. Well, that's baseball for you. A team that finished with the worst record in the big leagues, who averaged the second fewest run scored per game in the National League, facing one of the top pitchers in baseball, was about to pull through. After a leadoff single and a sacrifice, Ryan Thompson hit a blooper that just managed to fall in no man's land, allowing the tying run to score. The next batter would fly out to left, and with two outs with the winning run on first, future Hall of Famer Eddie Murray stepped up to the plate. And he drives it down the right field line. The third is Thompson. He's coming in and the Mets win it. When Thompson came in to score the walk-off run, all attention turned to Anthony Young, who had just won his first game in more than 15 months, finally putting an end to the streak. After the win, Young said his teammates treated it like he had just won a World Series game for them and now he doesn't have to worry about the streak anymore. In an interview following the game, Young kept his upbeat mentality, saying that when you're in a funk, you just need to go back out there and do the best you can. Two weeks after his victory, Young made an appearance on The Tonight Show starring Jay Leno. Interesting to think that Young could have just been another pitcher on a last place team, but became nationally recognized thanks to the streak. That victory was not only the only one that season for him, it was Young's final one as a Met, as he was traded to the Cubs following the season. It might be the most unwanted, miserable record any pitcher has ever had, but for one day during one of the worst seasons in New York Mets history, there was never a pitcher as ecstatic to win a game as Anthony Young was in a late July game some 31 years ago.